Do you have a little bit of money to invest, but it isn't quite enough? Not enough to go into real estate, not enough to set up a business, not enough to get decent returns by putting it in the S&P as an index tracker. So what should you invest in then? Instead of following the 20 year old finance experts, here is what I think you should do and why. Definitely not 20 years old, far too old for that now. It's actually incredibly logical what I'm about to share with you. My name is Lewis Crumpton, 33, and this is not financial advice, where we talk all things trading, personal finance, and how to live your best life. If you want to make more money in less time while having way more fun in life, then this is the channel for you. So make sure that you like this video, that you subscribe to the channel, that you turn on alerts, and you'll be then able to find out when we release all of our videos, which we do twice per week. As always, I have a free gift for you in the description of this video, which is going to dramatically speed up your journey to mastering money and the financial markets. All investing really comes down to numbers. Do the numbers work? Are you happy with the numbers? Are you happy with the life those numbers are creating for you? But also, are you happy in the way that you make those numbers happen? There are literally a zillion ways for you to make money out there. Some take more time, some take more effort, some take more money to get started, and some will just never make you the returns that you want to see. So why would somebody like me, an investor, tell you that investing in the S&P is a worse decision than investing in the SME? Firstly, if you don't know what the S&P is, it's a collection of the largest tech companies in the US economy. When we group together collections of companies we call these indexes within certain sectors. The S&P is an index just like the Dow Jones, the FTSE in the UK or the DAX in Germany. A lot of people, particularly nowadays, are really pushing out the idea that you should be investing every single penny you have into long-term index trackers. Now that isn't bad advice, there's a lot of sound logic and reason behind that, it just isn't great advice. It also very much depends on what part of your wealth journey you're on and where you're up to. For example, if you're closer to the end of your life, investing in long-term stock holdings may be safe, but it isn't certain. And personally, I think that at that point in your life, you should just be spending and enjoying your money like there is no tomorrow. Because reality is, at that point, you may not have very many tomorrows left. Is that a bit too morbid to say? Oh well, too late now, it's on the recording. Now I tell my parents this all the time, spend my inheritance. They are the ones who earned it, they should be the ones to enjoy it. I am in a financial position already in my life where I can retire if I choose to. I don't need a windfall of inheritance from my parents to save me financially. Can you say the same? Do you want to say the same? And if you can't yet, but you want to, what is your plan to make that a possibility, to make that a reality for you? One of the best things you can start out by doing is investing in yourself. Now I'm not talking long baths here or long walks in the forest, although those are great too, I'm talking about increasing your value. Now I wanna be really careful here to start off by saying that as a human being, you are already incredibly valuable and wonderful and deserving of every single good thing. I wanna make that really clear. What I'm referring to here is your value in the work or the business market. So how do we increase our value there? What we do is we increase our ability to generate income, whether that be for ourselves, whether that be for our employers. Now I'm not opposed to jobs and I think they are actually a massively underrated tool that we can use for generating wealth. Watch some of my previous videos to see what I'm talking about there. And if you increase your skill set to be more useful for the company that you may be working for, then you increase your working value and you therefore increase the amount of money that you should expect to be paid for the same amount of hours worked. It is all about positioning, skill and knowledge. For example, if you work in a Starbucks Starbucks as an entry level barista, then you do not deserve to be paid as much as a Starbucks manager. At the management level, there's a new set of skills, of competencies, and responsibilities that you need to master in order to take on that position. The ROI of gaining those skills over a 30 year period will pay you more than putting your basic barista salary into index trackers. Double bonus is that you will have more money to actually put into an index tracker 
when you increase your skills and therefore increase your pay. Let's take this to the next level then. If you are working as a barista and you get offered an overtime shift at work for the weekend, you would naturally, if you're free and you want to make more money, say yes, because it will put that extra money into your pocket or the index tracker. Now let's say you work 16 hours over the weekend and earn, I don't know, 160 pounds for your time. You could instead pay to do a course on phlebotomy for 500 pounds. It would take you a weekend to complete the course. Then at your weekends after that, instead of earning 160 pounds for 16 hours work, you could instead be making 360 per weekend. What you have done is you've increased your skill set, you've learned some knowledge, you've increased your value and given yourself a greater return on your time invested by improving what you can do with that time. And that is just talking about increasing your value for the hours that you do. Where it gets really exciting is when you develop a skill that allows you to leverage others time and leverage money. Take trading Forex, for example. It takes me less than 30 minutes per day to trade, and yet the market is moving the whole day, even overnight. Now that is me leveraging the time. And then the market moves and it makes me money. That way I have bought myself more time freedom while still making better money than I did in my old job for way less time committed all because of the skill set that I learned. And as you can see, the best investment that you can make then is into yourself. Increase your value, develop a skill set that can generate you more money. That is what is so good about trading. You can start small, you can grow big without all the other overheads and risks of business, property, drop shipping, and all those other crazy things that are actually time reliant and dependent on others. And by learning to trade, you're investing in so many ways into the SME instead of the incredibly slow burn of the SM. P. Investing long term in stocks and shares is not a bad thing, but let's get you a better ROI on that, on your time, money and energy. So in the description of this video for a free thank you gift about how you can start making progress with your trading, check it out. And make sure you like this video, you subscribe to the channel and you share it with somebody that you think is going to help or inspire. My name is Lewis Crompton and this is not financial advice.